جزا الله بالخيرات عنا إماتا لنا نقل القرآن عذبا وسلسالا فمنهم بدور سابعة قد تواساطت سماء العلا والعادل زهرا وكمالا Now inshallah ta'ala we're going to go into the meaning of the أحرف السبعة In my previous episode I spoke about the reason why there is a khilaf, a difference of opinion, a dispute amongst the scholars regarding the Ahruf al Sabah, why they differed. I gave one reason, and I said the reason is because there is no text uh, to state and explain to us what the Ahruf al Sabah is. And we don't have no delil from the Quran or the Sunnah that explains to us what is meant by the uh, Al Ahruf al Sabah. The second reason why there is a lot of difference of opinion regarding the Ahruf al Sabah is because the scholars are struggling to understand, or some scholars have struggled to understand, what is meant by uh, Al Ahruf and what is meant by Al Sabah. So let me, inshallah ta'ala, uh, unpackage this for you all. The Ahruf al Sabah, the scholars, they looked at it from two perspectives. The first perspective in which they looked at it was what is Al-Ahruf and what is Al-Sab'ah? They looked at it individually. And then what they did again is they looked at it together. What does it mean? And so that's why the difference occurred. And I'm going to inshallah ta'ala explain in this episode bi idni al kareem So for example, the word Al-Ahruf is a plural. It's called Jam'u Taksir, a broken plural. In the Arabic language, there are three types of plural. There is a, a masculine plural, there is a feminine plural, and there's a broken plural. If you want to know more about this, you have to go study uh, Arabic grammar. So al-ahruf is jab'u taksir, it's a broken plural. And the singular for it is al-harf. Now this word al-harf, it's a, a term which the scholars uh, in the Arabic language refer to as a lafd which is mushtarak. A lafd which is mushtarak. Mushtarak means it has many meanings. Now, this word al-harf has many meanings. Yani, the word al-harf in the Arabic language is sometimes referred to as al-taraf or al-had or al-janib or al-nahiya. Or al naqatu al-damira, or al wajh or al qira'ah. And he has the word al harf has all of those meanings. Some of them, some of the scholars, they said it means edge. Some said corner. In the Arabic language, it's also used as corner. It's also used as the brink of something. It's also used as a lean camel. Uh, it's also used as a angle. It's also referred to as Al-Qira'a recitation. So, because this term is mushtarak, it has many meanings, it brought about confusion. But the strongest opinion is that the word Al-Harf, it means two of those meanings. It doesn't mean Al-Naqatu al-Dhamira. Of course, it doesn't mean a lead camel in the discussion of Al-Ahruf al-Sab'ah. Nor does it mean Al-Taraf or Al-Had or Al-Janib or Al-Nahiya. It doesn't mean any of that. The strongest is that it means Al-Wajh or Al-Qira'ah. Those are the two. Al-Wajh or Al-Qira'ah. And I'll explain that more inshallah ta'ala bi-idhnillah al The second is the word Al-Sab'ah. They differ amongst themselves, what is a sabah? And there are two views regarding it. The first view is that the word a sabah is not literal. And it doesn't literally mean seven, it's a metaphor. The Arabs sometimes use the word a sabah and they refer to a lot. As long as it's in the tens, that's what they're referring to. So it can, it can mean uh, eight, nine, and etc. 
okay? This means that a sab'a is not literal, according to those scholars. They believe it's not literal, it's metaphor, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't mean it literally seven. This view is attributed to uh, Al-Qadir Iyad, who died in year 544, and um, Jamaluddin Al-Qasimi uh, mentioned this view and strengthened it in his, uh, the introduction of his tafsir, in Muqaddimah al-Tafsir. Uh, Al-Qadir Iyad, uh, him holding this view, Suyuti mentioned in his Kitab Al-Itqan, Fi Ulum Al-Quran. So this view, they're saying that it's not literal, it's metaphor, it's metaphorically that the Prophet is was referring to, um, and that's the path that they took. The second view is the view of the Jumhur, the overwhelming majority of scholars, which is ala haqiqatiha, that the word seven is literal. It's not a metaf metaphor, it's actually literal, it's seven. And their argument is stronger, and this is the strongest, uh, this is the strongest opinion. The reason why we strengthen this opinion is because all of the narrations that are authentic, uh, all of the narrations which are authentically transmitted from the Messenger والسلام, states clearly and also categorically the letter, I mean, the number seven. The number seven. And if you look at the narration I mentioned before, the, the, the hadith of Ubay, I mentioned in my previous, uh, the, the, one of the previous episodes, um, Jibreel came to the Messenger وسلم, four times. When he first came, he told him that Allah is commanding you to read the Quran in one harf. Then the Messenger وسلم, said, My Ummah, um, they can't do that. And then the second time, uh, Jibreel came, the Prophet وسلم, said, My Ummah uh, can't do that. They can't read in two uh, harf. And the third time, uh, Jibreel came. And he said that Allah is commanding you to tell, command your people to read the Quran in three harf. Uh, the Prophet responded and he said, my ummah cannot do that. And on the fourth, fourth uh, time that Jibreel came, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was informed that the Quran has been sent down in seven harf. So you can see the word seven was mentioned after those numbers. So the, the, uh, the number is literal. Not to mention, this hadith, as we mentioned, is mutawatir. It's a multitude narration. And all of the narrations have clearly categorically stated how much it is stated uh, seven. Okay, it's stated seven. And the other narration which mentions three is not authentic. So seven is authentic. So this is the strongest opinion that the word al-harf, ahruf, which is the jam'a of al-harf, it means one of two meanings. It means al wajh or mil or it can mean both, no problem. And the word seven, it's literal and it's not metaphorical. That's why they differed as well, because of the meaning of these words. Now what they did is they tried to bring it together. They said, okay, let's bring the two, the, the two words together, al-ahruf and al-sab'a. What does it mean? The scholars amongst themselves differed and the views of these scholars, I've categorized them into two for you, inshallah ta'ala. A group or a category Their opinion has no weight whatsoever and there's no evidence strengthening it. The second is a group Their view is given consideration, it's looked at. And the reason why it's looked at and is given consideration is because they have evidences in general or they have what resembles an evidence. What they're saying resembles, it looks like evidence. Because remember, the reason why I say there's, it looks like evidence or in general there is evidence to support it is because no one can claim in this issue they have any evidence whatsoever. All of these opinions are based upon ijtihad, independent reasoning. Because if there was a text to prove uh, that this view is stronger than it, there wouldn't be a, uh, a khilaf. So let me start inshallah ta'ala with the first group of people whose view doesn't really have any weight whatsoever. There is no evidence for it, but we're just mentioning it so you all know of it. There are three categories. 
the group of people whose view who have their view has no weight whatsoever are three type. The first one is uh, Ahlul Fiqh, some of the people of Fiqh, some of the scholars of Fiqh, a view that they put forward regarding the uh, seven Ahruf. They put a view forward. They said that the hadith of the seven Ahruf is Al Mutlaq Wal Muqayyad. Al Khasu Wal Aam, Al Nasu Wal Muawwal, Al Nasikh Wal Mansuq, Al Mujmal Wal Mufassar, and Al Istithna. They said it's Al Mutlaq Wal Muqayyad, restricted and unrestricted, Khas and Aam, uh, general and specific, Al Nasu Wal Muawwal, a decisive text and an interpretive text, Al Nasikh Wal Mansuq, the abrogated and the abrogator. Al Mudmal and ambiguous and a clear verse, a clear text. And Al Istithna, exception. And this is what the, some of the Fuqaha put forward, and they said, this is what it's meant by it. The second is the, some of the people of the language, Ahlul Lugha and Balagha, they put a view forward. And they said it is Al Hadfu wa Sila, Al Taqdeemu wa Taakhir, Al Qalbu wa Istiara. التكرار الكناية الحقيقة المجاز المجمل المفصل الظاهر الغريب يعني this is the views that they put forward then came the people of تصوف people of تصوف أهل الصوفية they said we have um, the understanding of the seven أحرف and they mentioned some things related to their their science or their actions يعني Things connected to their tasawwuf. They said it means a zuhud to be aesthetic, al qana'a contentment with certainty. They said al hazm to be decisive. They said al raja having hope, al karam um, generosity. They said al istighfar, al rida, al shukr, al sabr, al muhabba, al shawq, ma al mushahada, al muhasaba. They, they, they mentioned these and they said it's referring to these. Al istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness, hope, uh, kindness, and generosity, muraqabatu, ma'al khawf, um, knowing Allah is looking at you, having fear in your heart, um, gratitude, patience, love. They said these are the things that he's referring to. These three views, as I said to you, it's a view la yu'taddu bihi wa la dalila alayhi. No consideration should be given whatsoever, and there is no evidence for it. The reason why these three views are not given a consideration whatsoever is for the following three reasons. The first one is, they don't have any evidence to support their view. They have no hujja, no proof, no evidence. It's just a mere claim. And so that's why the scholars, they said that their suggestion of what the Ahruf is Sab'a means is not given any weight whatsoever. The second reason is because it doesn't go in line with the meaning that can be taken from the Ahruf is Sab'a. The Ahruf is Sab'a, the way that the wording of the hadith is structured and the way that the hadith present, is presented, it's referring to recitation. That's clear. It's not referring to actions as such or information of whether this text is general or specific, is talking about الفاظ, that my ummah cannot recite in one ahruf. So it's clear it's talking about a recitation of something. And what they are suggesting, suggesting here is not something that's recited. Sabar is not recited and shukr is not recited. Okay? Um, so that's what makes it very weak. It goes against the understanding that can be taken from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in this situation. And last but not least, the third reason why this view is very weak is because it doesn't support the reason why the Ahruf is Sab'a came down. The Ahruf is Sab'a came down for what reason, brothers and sisters? It came down to make the, 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 the recitation of the Qur'an easy for the people and to give the people a way to read the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that's easy for them and uh, they, can, uh, they, can, they can recite. So it goes against the whole concept of al-yusru, wa tawsi'a, wa takhfif, 
that the hadith is trying to show because the Prophet kept saying to Jibreel my ummah are not able to do this and what they're suggesting doesn't uplift any uh, uh, use, uh, any sorry mashaqa, hardship from the uh, ummah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.